So I want to start this one by asking a question that Jay made me think of what we were setting up. Uh Uh-uh. What now in life, because, you know, we ain't in our 20s no more. You know what I'm saying? The only youngster here on the block is man's behind the camera over there switching them. <laughs> Len words, what happened where you realized, you know what? I ain't no spring chicken no mo. What happened? Is there any moment that you could recall back? You're like, damn, yep, I'm definitely not in my 20s no mo. Yeah. I, uh... <clears throat> what was I doing? I was like uh, just chilling watching, I think it was like football mm-hmm. a couple of weeks ago. And I, you know, when you're at the house, you just kind of lean back and sip a little something. So I was, you know, probably had like two or three drinks. Mm-hmm. And then I was like, are my eyes going fuzzy? Oh, shit. <laughs> I might need glasses. Like I was sitting oh. in the same spot and I was just like, like switching eyes, like doing this <laughs> shit. Like, why is this one a little just, you know, one's a little sharper than the other. And I'm like, nah, bro, Uh-oh. I'm not having that. I got, I got down. I had to pray, man. I said, la la, man, I need it. But, I need love. I mean, at least now, though, <laughs> if it happens now, bro, yeah. you can go and get that LASIK real quick. I'm, not doing, the, I'm not doing the eye lasers, man. Yeah, see, I, I kind of worry about, bro. Li- listen, I kind of worry about that a little bit, too. Because, man, I've been wearing spectacles since I was, like, fucking fourth grade or some <laughs> oh, shit like yeah. that. So it would be awesome to just wake up in the morning and see. Yeah. Shit. I don't oh, even know what to do with myself, bro. Man, it's a great life. But... I feel there's still that point one 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 chance <laughs> where you're gonna be fucked up from yeah. the laser beams being shot into your eyeballs. That's right. why I haven't done it yet. Yeah, that's why I haven't done it yet. So the vision is the first thing that's going with Lenworth. That was a that was the only time where I just really thought of, I was like, damn, like I I don't completely control this anymore. <laughs> like, man. What if it's cataracts? Nah. Nah, nah, nah. Man, it's, the none, it's, that it's, too. it's none of that, really. I just rubbed my eye and it went back to normal. Anyway, so it, <laughs> you had like anyas, bro. Yeah, but it was, the yeah. First time, it was the first time I, I thought that. Mm-hmm. And I was like, ugh, I don't like that feeling. Bro, when I was younger, um, I remember when I first had to have spectacles. Mm-hmm. The doctor told me the fucking greatest lie on the face of the damn earth. Yeah. This man says, listen, you wear these every day. You ain't going to need them later on in life. I'm like, man, that's a damn lie. Damn wow. Lying ass motherfucker, bro. Damn, bro. Liar. I wore them ugly ass 90 <laughs> glasses every day, bro. Them ugly <laughs> joints. You know those big, <laughs> thick, crazy looking nasty ones? Really? Well, yeah, but we didn't have money to buy them, so we had yeah. Medicaid, right? And Medicaid, it's interesting. When you don't have money to buy the nice glasses, uh-huh. there's this small little drawer that they pull out, right, when you get your glasses. And they're like, uh-huh. these are the free glasses. Right. These are the only yeah. ones you can get, right? Yeah. So my first pair of glasses were them 90s, like, wireframe, big old fucking bug-eyed looking fucking spectacles, bro. Yeah. I never had the one with, like, the bar across here. Okay. The George Costanzas or whatever the fuck those, <laughs> those things would be called. Uh, but my first pair of glasses were, were diabolical. Really? Yeah. They were yeah. ugly as shit, and I wore them every single day. Yeah. Because guess what? My doctor told me. Your, your eyes will get better. Your eyes will get better. Doctors really? don't lie, bro. Listen, yeah. lying ass doctor. <laughs> if my eyes have steadily gotten worse here. If you keep rolling around in this wheelchair, you'll be able to walk again. Yeah, <laughs> fucking liar. Oh, bro. Hey, liar. Sorry, what? But it's true because the less you uh, listen, your chances of walking are probably better oh, if you damn. start utilizing your legs. You got to start doing yes. all the the PT and everything. So yeah. if I if I yeah. did like I don't know eye strength training. <laughs> <laughs> you wear the glasses and it, it like allows, I was doing, man. Yeah, well, you wear the glasses like and then and then your brain gets used to like having the glasses on, mm-hmm. so your eyes don't have to work as much. Well, your eyes are muscles, so like, how I, how are you supposed to like exercise? Bro, here we are. Advoc- I had a friend. Shout out to Kyle McAllister. He used to have to do eye exercises because he had a lazy eye. Uh-huh. So he would how do you do them? It, it helped. He was great point guard. He, yeah. could see, he could see the court right, he, like he, nobody's everybody. business. Yeah, he looking like Biggie. Yeah, yeah he was throwing looking no, like Biggie with he, one eye. Yeah, like <laughs> he would throw a no look looking at you. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, no, wow, bro, damn. No, but uh, he would have to do like eye exercises. That's where I got that from. You like close one eye and you have to like look around mm. and like adjust your focus near and far and just do all that stuff. That makes yeah. sense. Okay, just to get the motor control up 
and then the blood flow increases and it, mm-hmm. and supposedly yeah. that's the same way the muscles are are working as See, well. See, so, so I blame my doctor for my eyes being fucked. He up. lied to you. He I lied. thought he was gonna tell you, nah. hey man, you're gonna Hell get all the nah. girls. Nah, nah, yeah. nah, 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 nah. <laughs> You should wear these, bro. Nah, them not them, them, them free ones, man. Them nineties joints were <laughs> ugly. As hell, and it's crazy because they're coming back now. Are they really? Yeah, man, they're they're coming they're back. coming back. Round and round we go. <laughs> but see, I never, I I had the wire frames, but not you know what I'm talking about with the little mm-hmm. wire across the top. Right, they're right, like right. more square, yeah, right? Yeah. I never had those. I don't know why. I, those were the ugliest to me. They were, those were. Worse. I thought I was flossing with the ugly cousin version of those, though. Gotcha. But that was all we could have, bro. Yeah. I remember when I started like losing my vision. It was like kind of what you explained. We were mm-hmm. driving. I'm like, damn, I can't really see that sign. And I was like fourth grade. Oh, wow. Yeah, it sucked. Mm. I, so I've been wearing that shit forever. And, yeah. you know, contacts, they just bug. Mm-hmm. I even have the one-a-days, and they still piss me off. Really? I just wish I could wake up and see, but not, not enough to risk further damage to my eyes at this point. Yeah. Right? I know everybody's like, the surgery's been around for a long time, mm-hmm. but I feel like I'd end up being that point one fucking percentage. <laughs> well, I'm sure they run tests and stuff to make sure that you're... An ideal they, candidate. Have you seen how eligible. they do... Have you seen that surgery, <laughs> yeah. though? Uh-uh. Brother, well, they chop... They cut a little piece of your eyeball, right? And they fold bla- back a flap. It's like a flap. It's like a film on your <laughs> eye. They fold it back, and then they shoot the lasers into your fucking eyeball. Right. Fold it back. Fuck. Then they do the other side, and then they cover up your eyes, and they give you, I don't know, something knocks you out for like almost 24 hours, Mm -hmm. and you wake up, and you can see. Nice. Bro, that's fucking amazing. Everybody I know who's ever had it loves it. Yeah, see, I think I I think the it's a calculated risk for you. I think you'll be fine. Yeah. Yeah. You just got to get mentally past the anxiety about the negative outcome. It would just just focus on... The positive. I'm gonna be able to see. It it's would just be suck great, though to have you know? worse vision based off of a vanity metric. Yeah. When I'm fine with glasses, gotcha. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But but then I'm like, fuck. It's like the people that have like hor- like horrific experiences getting a surgery because they wanted to like I don't know f- get a facelift. Yeah. Then they walk around looking fucking surprised what, all what, the time. What's that show? <laughs> botched. Botched. Yeah. Botched. Yeah. 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 You know what I'm yeah. 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 No, I don't want to be walking around surprised at a funeral. Like, nah. come on, dog. Like, <laughs> that, that show looking like you're wild. smiling. Someone just died, and you're over here smiling because you got a fucked up I, facelift I, surgery. I remember I seen one of those shows, bro, and some chick had like two different sized titties. Yeah, and like one was like higher and lower, and mm-hmm. they they were like, "Well, we could we could definitely fix that." <laughs> that fucking show was wild, bro. Really, we, people were. You know, up. you know, they're never exact though. Like they're nah. never symmetrical. Nah, mm-hmm. I don't want. I don't they're want someone naturally. with. I don't want someone with perfectly symmetrical titties, dog. Yeah. Come on, bro. That's weird. I don't want. That's wild. With, I, don't want someone with, I don't want someone with like. Uneven and well, it's got to be a balance, either, dog. Like, hey, hey, well, yeah. hey, I got Jay, this one on all, the deal. Hey, all, t- all titties. Are <laughs> I got this one. On I got it. this one done in, in San Tropez. I got this one done in Miami. <laughs> I got this one on a discount. Yeah, discount this they, my discount. They, they, <laughs> hey, that's crazy business. Buy but one, back, get one free. buy one get one free. Yeah. Yeah. Back to the conversation at hand. Before yeah. I, it's always me that takes it on a tangent. I know. I, yeah. Fuck it. Right. Things that happen that make you feel old. That was it. Hey, I'm not trying to throw him under the bus, but Jay, What's up? welcome to these radios, dog. Yeah. Jay's like, I accidentally sat on my balls. <laughs> that is he something that. that doesn't happen in your 20s. That's true. No. That that's does, that's yeah. very uh, uncommon, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Because gravity hasn't taken place yet, right? right? <laughs> yeah. Gravity happens to the testicular area. Mm-hmm. The older you get. And then sometimes you just, you yeah. know, you, you sit on one of your nuts. I tried to slide a little bit, but I'm going to readjust. Yeah. And, I'm and sitting, something I'm, else didn't move with me. I'm yeah. sitting on my balls right now. I'm <laughs> <laughs> you know, you just got to live with it. <laughs> this just hey. happens. So is that is that a moment that makes you feel old? That, or you yeah, got another one? I can one? say that. No, that that's a good one, bro. Um, uh, man, bro, I, I I fucking fall asleep early now, though. I gotta say that, bro. I'm out. Sometimes I'm out by like eight fifteen. Yeah, it's a good feeling. I'll wake up all fucking energized, yeah. or sometimes I'll wake up madder than fuck, all in a bad mood because I slept too much. But you get but you get up at what like five? Yeah, five, yeah. about five. Yeah, like so five do I. thirty. Yeah, so, so do I. I. So I don't begrudge me like that. Now, if you can schedule those midday naps, that's that's when you get in there. Not only that, but you're getting really efficient with your time now. Well, they say smart. they say a nap is like I can't take a nap and feel energized. Every time I take really? a nap, I feel like I woke up five years later, dog. I'm like yeah. lost. I'm groggy. Uh, it's, groggy I can't nap. Sure. It's that it's that second half of the afternoon, like two o'clock, three o'clock. Mm-hmm. 
where if I could bang out a nap like two to three, I'm good until like 10, 11, 12. You know, like see within you up late as fuck like that. Yeah, but then I can still get up at five and feel wide awake. Okay, I see. Yeah, you, I see. You. It's it's a nice balance, man. I, it's funny because you said falling asleep early, man. I remember when I was like, "Y'all motherfuckers asleep by nine thirty? What the fuck is wrong with you? Nine <laughs> thirty? Yeah, and now I'm like, damn. If I go to sleep at nine thirty, I wake up at five, refresh. <laughs> yeah, super refreshed. Trying to figure well, it yeah. out. Yeah. When you're younger, you know you're you're doing all kinds of extra shit. You're drinking, you're partying, you know what I mean. Uh-huh. So it's like, yeah. Now, bro, I feel I, I feel like I'm wasting the fucking day. If I wake up at like eight, nine, mm-hmm. bro, that's like three, four hours. The sun's nah, going. I, I do feel uh, a little that. guilty when I sleep in to like seven, seven thirty or something. I'm just like, mm, nah, don't. Like do I gotta that. do something, yeah, brother. Yeah, I yeah. can't even do that anymore. Like, yeah. like legit. Even if I fucking wanted to, I could have a whole night of just shenanigans, right? Debauchery, <laughs> drinking like I'm fucking nineteen years old again, right? Mm-hmm. My ass is up at five o'clock, bro, sharp. Yeah. I can't. I, I I don't know. I guess my the scientific mm-hmm. version of it is my circadian rhythm, right? Yeah. I'm set to where I'm set. I, I'm bro. That clock goes off at five. I'm up. I'm mm-hmm. out. I'm in the plunge, and I'm fucking just yeah, living. Just, yeah. So I've done it for so long now that my body's just used to it. So if I go to bed late like that, I am fucked because I'm still <laughs> gonna wake up, dog. Right. I'm still gonna wake up. I'm still gonna be doing my thug thizzle. I'm just going to be from a point of just really fucking hating life. Yeah. So I can't do it. Hey. So my okay. version of that, Jay, would probably come back around to what Jay said, too. Mm-hmm. I try and watch TV now, like around like, you know, the kids go to sleep and it's like, I don't know, 830, Aaron's going to bed, everybody's chilling. It's time to like just chill out and have kids asleep alone time. Mm-hmm. Bro, I'm just... My head nodding like this. <laughs> I look like I'm cooled out like a motherfucker, bro, just on the couch. And I am I can feel my... I'm like, God damn, I'm my dad? Fuck, bro. Because you, <laughs> you used to watch them when they were older, like, just, like, nod out like that, you know, even like, when they were sober. Yeah, I, they didn't yeah. have to always be on something. Just yeah. tired. Oh, yeah. Oh, 9.30, yeah. bro, I'm just like, oh, shit. Yeah. yeah. It's time to go to sleep. I, I think my kids have figured me out on the weekends. Because I get I, I'll, on Saturday, by the end of that... I'm just like, I'm mm-hmm. chilling with the kids. It's fine. So my daughter especially has me primed because she'll be like, Dad, let's watch a movie. And I'll put something on and then I'll be asleep in like 15 minutes. And then she's when I wake up, she's in the other room and it's like 1130, almost midnight. And she's still up watching cartoons and shit. And I'm just like, <laughs> you knew what you were doing. Yeah, man. <laughs> but don't you guys remember when we would stay up late as fuck playing video games? The sun would come up and you just be straight. I remember one time specifically, dog, mm. me and my cousin Joe. We went and bought like a fucking a case of Surge. You guys remember that nasty ass oh, drink? Oh yeah, yeah. Y'all yeah. remember Surge? It was like that the green, knockoff Mountain that, Dew. It was. It was. It was that green drink. It like had like a red little logo and it said Surge, kind of like splash. This was, you remember yeah. that shit, Len Word? They ain't had that. So they had like extra. No, no we had, had like, fake. We had Fago. Yeah, you guys yeah. had your Y'all own. Didn't okay. have Fago. Yeah, 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 that's true. We didn't. Mm-hmm. And, you know, the ICP had to make it popular for Fago to start, you know, popping up over Talk here. That yeah. bitch go in the fridge and get yeah, me yeah. a fucking Fago. Fago. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Anyway. I treat that bitch to a Fago and a slice of pizza. <laughs> that was Eminem, Marshall Mathers, Slim Shady. But man, what the fuck was I saying? Oh, search. Yeah. Me and my cousin Joe, because it had like a higher caffeine like uh, percentage than other drinks. So we went and got a case of them shits, and we drank, bro. We were like, we're going to stay up all night. <laughs> bro, we stayed up all night long, fucking railed out on Surge, bro, <laughs> yeah. watching horror movies. And then when the sun came up, I, like both of us were just, just caffeined out of our mind, bro. And there was so much sugar in there, so we were like... Nasty, I feel like ugh, it was nasty, dehydrated, business, dehydrated bro. We fell asleep on the fr- in the front yard on the porch. <laughs> yeah, Passed yeah, out. Bro. But you used to, as a kid, stay up late as fuck playing video games, bro. Yeah. Like my mom would be like, go to sleep, and we'd be quiet, <laughs> like silently playing yeah. Golden Eye, bro. Bro, that's what that's down. what it was though. Yeah, we'd yeah. get donuts every now and then. We get surge, but we uh, that's what it was. We'd fucking OD on fucking <laughs> caffeine and play video games, bro. That's terrible. That sounds awful right now. That was great, dog. It was great best, then. Best times of my life. It was. Dog. Imagine doing it now, though. Yeah. In your 50s, yeah. Jay. Yeah. <laughs> doing it in your 50s, Jay. As long as I ain't sitting on my balls, we'll be good. You dog. already did that. You already <laughs> did that. So on that note, yeah. you are now tuned in to Respect the Connect. I'm your host, Johnny James, and I'm here with a few of my nearest and dearest. Jay old man, sit on my balls. Trav is in the building. What's poppin', Jay? Wow. 
I'm chilling, dog. I, I don't even know what to say to that Listen, shit. Listen, I threw I'm that. Posted, came dog. out of left field, dog. Did, left dog. field. I'm I didn't just, even know you were going to say I'm, anything about it. I'm just that, glad dog. you ain't sitting on your balls anymore, dog. I'm just glad you ain't sitting on your balls. <laughs> Land words. Are you not sitting on your balls? How you doing? I think I still am. Hold still, on. Still, kind of, a little piece of it. Shake it out. There we yeah. go, bro. Re- yeah. Rearrange, yeah. rearrange, yeah. rearrange. Yeah. Episode 82 makes some motherfucking noise. Yes, bro, 82. What's up, fellas? What's up, man? Fucking Sunday fun day. Sunday, dog. Is Sunday really the fun day, though? Because yeah. I kind of feel like that's Saturday. Does it? I feel like it's Friday. I have more fun Friday, on Saturdays. Dog. I'm yeah, say, Friday is I'm more. Say Friday yeah, Friday is pretty fun. That's but it just like, doesn't sound as good. Friday fun day. I think I probably rhyme. have more fun on Saturdays. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think they just say yeah. Sunday fun day because it rhymes. Yeah. And it's better yeah. than Monday. <laughs> no one yeah. says Monday fun day. Yeah. Nah. Well, Monday ain't fun, dog. Monday. It should be. Monday is. Why? Why, not? why should it be? Because start, it's the beginning of the week, money, dog. Yeah, man. You, got, you, got to shift, you got to shift your perspective, right? I agree with Lem Words here. Mm-hmm. You got to shift your perspective, and Monday's got to be fun day. Mm-hmm. It's time to get it, right? Brand new day. You got a whole new fucking breath on fresh life. Mm-hmm. Sunday has never felt like fun day to me. Nah. It's like, damn, bro, Sundays are weird to me. Mm-hmm. I've never really been a fan of Sundays. Really? Yeah, and I think it goes back to when we were at the bar. Right, oh, okay. Because all of my cousins would come. Right, everybody'd be there. It'd be a big ass party. Everybody was loving life. Yep. And then Sunday would come around, and the party would end. <laughs> okay. So for yeah. me, it signified the end of the party. All my cousins would leave, and then San Fidel would be a ghost town. Really? <laughs> right. To see that. The five people that were there, that was all that was there. Right. Uh, so that was a part of it, I think, with Sunday for me. Okay. Okay, I didn't. I didn't dislike Sundays growing up. I, you know, it was just either church or just at the house preparing for the week. Yeah, like that was it. Never really got to like hang out. I didn't get to see my cousins a lot. They lived in different states, mm-hmm. so <clears throat> we didn't like make that trip too often. So Sundays was really about being with family and. Those would be the nights where my mom would usually make a bigger meal. Uh-huh. My dad would usually be home all day. He watches 60 Minutes and iron his clothes <laughs> in the living room. And he'd cut my hair and yeah. fuck my head up. Bro, I and fucking hated it. I, I hated <laughs> Those 60 were Sundays minutes. for me. I hated 60 Minutes. Really? I, I grew to love it. Bro, I grew to love it. you got older. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, though. Look, now, <laughs> now though but I was, in, I, I was in middle school reading, like, Time Magazine and Newsweek and shit. Like, I feel yeah. now as an adult... <laughs> I would be dialed into 60 Minutes. <laughs> <laughs> you don't watch it? No, it's still on? It's still yeah, on. it's still on, yeah. man. It's oh, a legacy fuck. channel, It's man. a legacy yeah. channel. Yeah. It's, it's <laughs> grand <laughs> in, yeah. this motherfucker. Who's hosting That's it? That's like the Twilight it's Zone. Let's just going to keep going. It wasn't Andy Rooney, was it? It was Andy Rooney. Okay, yeah. he's gone though, right? Yeah, for sure. So who took his place? I don't even know. Probably like fucking host. Like I can see the guy's face. Jimmy Kimmel's up in that bitch. Nah, I can see the guy's face. I don't remember his name, but yeah, nah, they... They've been consistent, man. They've never gone in way. It, I, and I see, I don't know because, again, I haven't watched that shit for years. Mm-hmm. That felt like it was a time when news wasn't as biased as it is now, right? Mm-hmm. It felt like it was more um, level, medium ground. They didn't lean one way or the other. Well, 60 Minutes to me was almost like a high watermark for journalistic integrity. Uh-huh. And I think that that concept is kind of out yeah. the window now it yeah. wasn't it wasn't like actual news it wasn't trying to be sensationalized yeah. although i'm sure they was on some of that type of time if you go back and look at it now but not as much though they weren't yeah because there wasn't a, as much of a benefit to it that's as true. there is now now well, it's like that's the only way to get people's attention is to I you seen, know uh, shock them into shock them yeah, paying shock attention them. you know what yeah. uh, have you seen dave Chappelle? most deaf they have a podcast it's yeah. not video it's like there's audio it's called uh midnight hours or the after midnight after, miracle midnight miracle yeah. right so excellent, they had uh, excellent excellent conversation they had what's his name on there the other day uh daily show john stewart yeah and he was talking about how he went toe-to-toe with the dude that started fox news uh-huh. i guess it was a whole they, they butted heads, right? Mm-hmm. And he said that that was the beginning of when it shifted. Mm-hmm. That he he decided, I want to start a news station that's just this story. Right. Just one-sided. But it, like when I hear shit like that, you've heard it all the time. People are like, Fox News, everybody's pointing fingers, right? Yeah. Both sides are doing the fucking shit. Whoever yeah. started it, whatever, fuck it. Yeah. Didn't mean that both sides had to play game, right? Right. But they started doing it. But Jon Stewart was trying to like 
point, like pinpoint mm-hmm. when that started. And yeah. I mean, he might be on to something. And he was saying it was Roger Ailes and that's his it. And they, they butted mm-hmm. heads. He's like, I- I'd rather, because he, I guess he told Jon Stewart that you're going to be fucking broke without me. He's like, shit, if I could get rid of you, I'll fucking die a happy man broke as shit yeah i don't want you around right Mm -hmm. so that's where i guess they ended up butting heads but he claims he's the man that started that whole that the whole movement Mm. and that momentum of the news leaning one way or the other yeah i mean possibly i i think just since the invention of clay tablets Mm -hmm. anybody who's keeping records is gonna be on some fuck shit let me control the narrative yeah exactly that goes back to the scribes the pharisees like all that shit in ancient times like Mm -hmm. those were the people who were making moves and maneuvering and hustling because they were keeping keeping control of how people were communicating and all that shit yeah it just goes on and on and on and on and on i think roger ailes was unique because he was like independently wealthy Mm -hmm. so he could just throw the money into it almost like it was a a sports team mm-hmm. where it's like, I just want to fucking win. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, so it's like, I'm just going to keep pumping money into this Fox News thing. Jerry Jones. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> He's the Jerry Jones of cable yeah. news. Really? Jeez. Really? It's the At same thing. He's though. Fuck, we ain't won like 30 some fucking years, dog. <laughs> <laughs> he needs to start funneling money somewhere else, brother, because it ain't working. Y'all need to get on Fox News. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but I, I see where Jon Stewart can make that as an argument. Mm-hmm. But I also see where probably in the last uh, handful of years, even his position has kind of solidified on one particular side of most issues. Yeah. So even he and other people like Colbert and Bill like Maher. some... Bill Maher, who's who's my man, John Oliver, who yeah. I really I used to really really yeah. like John Oliver, it, it but it's like, like it's just way too one sided, and I it's agree. just like, bro, just make the jokes. I agree. They're all goofy. Yeah, just crack jokes on I both agree. sides, and we're good. Yep, I, I agree. You know what I'm saying? Even late night, like go back to to like Leno, right? Mm-hmm. And and uh, who was the other man? Uh, Leno's arch nemesis, Letterman. 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 Yeah. yeah. Right. They weren't. It didn't seem like they were one sided back then, dog. They was just everybody All the get jo- the smoke. Every, everyone get the smoke. Bro. Yeah, I don't give a fuck. Left, right, up, down, side to side. You're getting the smoke. Yeah. Right. The 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 G rated smoke. Right. Ex- of course. Right. Yeah. yeah. But it was still smoke. Yeah. I mean, look back to when they kicked uh, what's his name off of like Channel Four. Um, man's it's on. We just said his name. Uh, he's on HBO now. Um, Who? Bill Maher. Bill Maher. Yeah. Remember, bro? He was. Oh on, yeah. Bro, he was out there wilding. Yeah. And, and 9 11 happened, and they're yeah, like, oh, they, they, hey, shut the fuck up. Get the hell out of here, my guy. And I think that's what happened as time goes on and people get older and older. They get these, um, I want to say these, these ideas that they support or mm-hmm. these, you know, countries or whatever it is mm-hmm. that they're just like, no, I'm, I'm riding for them or that or whatever. Something happens or goes bad. Now you have an issue and you're going to stick to it. You ain't coming off that hill. Mm-hmm. So. Everything down down the line from that, everything down river is gonna have that same taint to it. So I I preferred it when it was just straight across the board, just jokes are jokes, everybody is hammer time, and it's just, you know, like we all know that they're all on some fuck shit. Mm-hmm. It seems like in the last few handful of years, especially since COVID, it was just like lockstep. And that's what I don't like. Mm -hmm. I don't like that. That's a little too obvious. It's like, no, we're going to make sure that everybody hates certain people. And (laughs) no, no, I'm serious. We're going to make sure that everybody hates certain people and everybody is forced to love other certain people. And if you don't, now you're out of the boat. Mm -hmm. Fuck that. Fuck that. Yeah. People are people are wrong. People are evil. People make mistakes no matter who they are, no matter what their history is. I don't I don't believe in just giving people infinite grace like you can never do anything wrong no fuck that i I, and it's funny you said that because i don't ever want to be a fan of something to that point right Right. i feel like when i was younger like i was blinded by that Mm -hmm. right i was such a fan of one thing that i would completely block out everything else i've said it a bunch of times you know what i'm saying you're a cowboy that's why i fucked your bitch you (laughs) fat motherfucker yeah you down with bad boys, staff, rec label, and fuck crew, fuck you. I still stand on that, right? <laughs> but he, I, I didn't give anybody else a chance because I was, I was such yeah. a Pac fan, right? Yeah. I wouldn't listen to Jay Z. I didn't want to hear nothing about Chino XL because I was so blinded by my, <laughs> by me being a Pac fan. I was riding. I, well, you know see, I didn't, uh, I didn't hear too much Jay Z. That's because we're though. so far away from the. Yeah, yeah, yeah true, coast, true. But where like, we are. 
I, I heard, I definitely knew who Pac was. You know yep. what I'm saying? We had, I had his tapes. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And you were saying, fuck Bad Boy and Staff Red yeah, Label and the motherfucking crew? I did. If you down with Bad Boy, then fuck you then too. Fuck you too. You know what I'm saying? But um, it hits a little harder today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, but yeah, I didn't really, like, Jay Z wasn't really on the scene. I mean, he probably was, but I was younger at that time too. Yeah. But it was, that's what I heard was the hit him up, you know, shit. So I was like, uh-huh. Jay Z. Who the fuck is you know? So when I knew you, who he was. I when guess, did you but. listen to Reasonable Doubt? Was it probably, like, probably when I was when, okay? When him and Nas started beefing was when I was like, okay, oh, that's let, when they went to see what was really up. Look, was, oh, because okay, okay. so at it that, was at that was, time. I was, okay. I was downloading okay. a lot a little, of music, and I was like, let me see what's up with Jay Z. Gotcha. And then so I that's two thousand one. One. Yeah. Yeah. So you was like five years off. Yeah. That that's not out. too far I mean that's not too much Because really Like unless you're really plugged in Like a super mm-hmm. super hip hop head yeah. And you're from down here mm-hmm. It was easy to miss It was easy to I miss dog Because he didn't pop off Until Pac was gone Big was Big gone was Everybody gone. was exactly. gone right? And he wasn't exactly. touring like that Nah And I feel like I feel like I feel like Mace and and Diddy's stupid ass. They popped off first mm-hmm. in the in the broad in the in the pop culture version of it. Uh, they were out there in their flashy like, na 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 na. They were in their flashy fancy suits, right? Mm-hmm. And they they exploded onto the scene, pun intended. Uh, and Jay was still going, but like he said it himself. Um, I'd rather rap like common sense. I did five mil. I ain't been rapping like common sense. Mm-hmm. Go back to Reasonable Doubt. Man, he rapping his goddamn ass off. Mm-hmm. He rapping, rapping. Mm-hmm. And the moment he started blowing up and doing records that weren't like that, yeah. he didn't really... I mean, he still did that, but not like that. Well, Hard Doc Life yeah. probably changed his whole That was it, I think, concept. for most people. Once yes, he did bro. that, he was just like... I think dude. that's what most people rec- like, were like, who the fuck is this guy? Mm, really? Bro, that, that beat caught my attention. Really? The sample. And I was like, what the fuck? That's crazy. Who, mm-hmm. who did this? And then yeah. Kanye, yeah. obviously. Yeah. Was that Kanye? I thought that was 45 King. It's a hard no. It was Kanye. See, uh, see Kanye. I got you with the trivia. No, Hold it was on. Kanye. It was no, Kanye. Wasn't? Not Kanye hard night says, light. I put Annie. I put Annie on the song, and that's when it blew up. Nah. It's a hard knock life. I don't believe that. I think I'm prom- I'm not 100% positive here. I'm about 98. It's a hard knock. Like it was, it was Kanye. Ooh. That's eight hundred. Who was it? That's hip hop for eight hundred. Okay. okay. Oh, we'll double him. jeopardy. We'll we'll Let's go. I feel Let's like go. he had that in the holster forever, <laughs> waiting to, to. Kanye had yeah. nothing to do with that record. Well, Kanye before, was all over that album though. Forty five King. Yeah. Kanye Mark was all the over the because yeah. that was off of the first Blueprint, right? Yeah. yeah. Correct. H2 no. No. Oh yeah. yeah Kanye did, did do H. Yeah. But that's off of the first Blueprint, right? No, that was the uh, Annie record. No, the Annie record was. Part two. What was it? Was called? it Blueprint Part Two? No, it wasn't. Or the Life Blueprint. and Times of Sean Carter. Yeah, I think it was Volume Life One. And Times Volume One. Had to be Volume One because it wasn't two. It wasn't two. Yeah. Because he was bro one. at that point. It was year. Boom, yeah. boom, boom. He was dropping. Bang, 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 bang. So why do we start talking about fucking Jay Z, man? Oh, because how you were saying how bi- how oh, biased you are. Yes, I don't want to be. Now you know, as a grown ass individual. Mm-hmm. I do not want to be such a fan of something that I just allow them the grace to do whatever the fuck, say whatever the fuck, and put out whatever kind of art or whatever it is. Yeah. I'm like, okay, no, 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 no. Sit down here, my guy. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, what, are you, what are you doing here, bro? I might catch some flack for this, but you know who I think is in that that vein is fucking Kanye, bro. Like, he yeah. Has, yeah. There's like like his like some of his fans, bro, or just yeah. Like, they're like, it's like it's a fucking cult, bro. Same same with them Eminem fans, them Cowboys fans, <laughs> them hey. Lakers fans, <laughs> nah. all of them, nah. all of them. Oh, brainwashed, nah, br- hey. brainwashed. Hey. You gotta pick. You gotta pick where you brainwashed that, <laughs> right? You pick, dog. Yeah, that, that's true though. Pick. That's yeah. true. You gotta pick. That is the but, truth. See, with with that's right. You just heard me. If I was a brainwashed Cowboys fan, uh, I'd be saying this, this year's our year. year. <laughs> <laughs> I just said we ain't been shit for thirty goddamn years, right? Okay. And M drop another goddamn Ed Sheeran record, bro. I'm gonna call in the shady, right? <laughs> we had some problems. So, but again, I went from when I was younger like that, yeah. right, to where like I wasn't listening. If if my favorite artist didn't like it. Damn sure I didn't like it. Huh. Mm-hmm. Okay. I, and I think a lot of people are kind of, they kind of get like that. And I, I mm-hmm. feel like it's consumerism. If that's a word? It is. Okay. It is. is it really? Yeah. It is. Consumerism yeah. at its finest because yeah. they're like, no, 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 no. I don't drink Pepsi. Oh, right. We drink Coke, son. Right. Fuck Pepsi. No, I choose Jeff. I don't, I don't drink Coke. I don't drink yeah. Coke. I snort it. 
No, <laughs> no I don't. I don't support them, bro. I don't know if I told you guys this. But oh yeah, yeah I know. I know about the, factory, about the, no, the whole the, the factory, factory yeah. and the people with they fucked up teeth. Yeah. But, well, yeah. Coca Cola stole all the water rights to this to the small town in Mexico, and all the, and the, that town has no running water, no water rights at all. But you know what they have ac- unlimited access to? Coca Cola. Right off the vine, the right pure Coca Cola. Right, <laughs> right off the fucking. Cra- these people are like suffering, bro. Like yeah, fucking missing like half of their jaw, missing like like. All they have to drink it's is so Coca-Cola. Fucked up, bro. Yeah, wow. it's so fucked up. Dog. That's diabolical. So, so when I seen that, I was like, oh, I'm not, I'm yeah, not fucking with them, yeah. shit them at all. So, Fuck Coca-Cola as a staff, record label, and as a motherfucking crew. Yeah. Nope. Yeah, that's crazy. Nope. I'll take that Coke money any day. Yeah, run it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have a Coke and a smile. <laughs> Just go pull up with a dentist and help fix their teeth. Yeah, hey, man, bro. you know what I'm saying? What, hey, Jay-Z said it. There's only one well, way to do it. That's exactly what yeah. Jay-Z said. It don't he said, work any other way. He said, I did five mil. I ain't been rapping like common sense. He's saying, okay, if I can make this money mm-hmm. doing this dumbed down shit, then I'm going to take it back, reinvest, and give back to the hood. Yeah. Did he do that? I don't really know his history, but yeah. that is a good way to do it. That's Iron Rand. Yes. Yeah. That's that Don't shit. die over the neighborhood that your mama <laughs> rent in. Yup. 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 Take, yep. take your yep. Coke money and buy the neighborhood. That's how you rent yes, it. Yes, yeah. bro. Exactly. He was good. I'm trying to give you a million dollars worth of game for $9.99. $9. $9. $9. Yeah. Shout bro, out, Sean. That 444 album's dope. I hope dope. that doesn't. Yeah, age. no, no, no. We ain't even going to talk there yet. <laughs> we don't got to go there yet. Shout bro. out to Sean. The, the, yeah. bro, I, that, man, I yeah. really hope they don't make me throw half of my 90s playlist in the motherfucking trash can. I told you, I'm going to have to delete I, half I the music not. off my phone. I really man. hope not. You, you know, me. fingers crossed here, dog. Yeah. Fingers crossed. They can't all be fuckheads. I, hey, I still, I still <laughs> have Outkast. Can they? <laughs> I'm, yeah. I'm, conv- I'm convinced <laughs> that... They were honest. <laughs> they, they can't all. They can't all be fuckheads. Right. Hey, so, I don't. I don't see Andre three thousand. Nah, this man out here on nah, his flute, bro. Yeah. You see him up on stage, nah. living his best life with his flute. Yep. And, and Big Boy, him and Eric Badu. Yeah, yeah. And Big Boy, like him and his wife. All he's always been about stripping and smoking weed and and kicking it and like that seemed like they were never putting anything false or trying to sell you anything except be yourself. That's what I like. Um. A lot of these other people who are going going down now, you go back and you listen to their music, and they are pushing a certain culture. Mm-hmm. They really yeah. are. Yeah, they really are. So, eh, we'll see. What do you guys? What do you guys think of Future's new mixtape? I still haven't heard it. Um, I, I did not heard it. like it. I didn't like it at all, bro. I, I did not like, I mean, like it. He's got some dope beats and shit, but again, like he's just. Why is that always the excuse we always throw him? Right, he's, that's always the lifeline that we all say. Right. Well, he's, cool. he's not saying anything. No, nah, he hasn't been saying nothing for a long time. You want to know that? You want? I'm gonna be real here, and I don't give a fuck. I'm, I'll catch you for it. I don't give a shit. The only album of Futures I ever have went back and listened to multiple times, and I'll still go back to, is the one with him and Drake. Oh yeah, the one with big rings and all that shit. That shit's yeah. hard, dog. Yeah, bro, it's yeah. with him and Drake. Now, I'm not trying to take away, uh, you know, some of the things that Future has done for the culture, mm-hmm. but Wale jumping out the window saying that he's top 10, dead or alive, and he's one of the biggest things for the culture, man, that fool sound like he glazing like a motherfucker, bro. Wale Chill out. said that about himself? About Future. Oh. He said that about Future. I get more out of Wale's music than I do out of yeah, Future. 1,000%. Yeah, yeah, so for I'm him surprised. Say, for me, that, yeah. was, that was weird. I'm like, what, dude? That's weird, dog. He's from D.C., man. That's Stand crazy. on business. Like, like, yeah. like, for real. Like, like, do you really feel that way? Because I don't think he does. I feel like mm-hmm. that was like a political ploy or some shit dog Uh, again art is subjective right your mount rushmore is gonna look completely different than mine but from my perspective i've listened to everything he's put out i never talk about something from a point of not hearing it Mm -hmm. my opinion that album was not it chief Mm. The one he dropped I, with Metro Boomin Metro, yeah. was way better than that I was about to say one. that. I, mm. I bumped that one. Every now and then I'll go back to his old, what was that old mixtape? Where is that, uh, fuck, at the same damn time. Yeah, too, yo, you yeah. know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, I just yeah. I just go back to like songs. Other than that, bro. Not albums. Here, here yeah, there. that's, a, that's a, you, exactly, man. exactly. I, I agree with you. I don't, yeah. And I don't, yeah, he's not, uh, bro, I guess he took over like the top like eight, eight uh, slots on, on one of the charts, uh-huh. bro. And, and one of the dudes I work with is like, bro, he's one of the best. He's one. I was like, what the fuck? Yeah, you can fuck. No, he's not one of the best. That's, those are ESPN stats. Yeah, yeah at that, that point, thing, it's like you're I just making no the way, stat. Dude. I put two chains way above future. Yeah, for me, really, I do, I do, I do. And, too. and look, he's two more. Chain. He's to me, he's more entertaining. Two, ch- he is. I like his two albums chains more. is not going to get um, the most lyrical artist award mm-hmm. any 
time soon. But mm-hmm. that don't fucking matter. You can't just judge the art based off of how lyrical it is every mm-hmm. single time, right? Mm-hmm. You just can't. He's, I feel like for me, he has better bodies of work. Yeah. For me. Uh huh. And one of the greatest lyrics of all time. Left hand <laughs> on the steering wheel, right hand on, on the, the pussy. pussy. When that <laughs> happened, I was like, oh, damn. This motherfucker got a camera in here? What the fuck's, doing? <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck's going on? Yeah, two chains. I, I put him above future, bro. Future's dope, though. I mean, he's got his place for sure in, 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 in rap, but. His new the mixtape was nah. not it, dog. Now mm. go and get your money, little dumb and bang my titty boy. Bro, he yeah, he has some dope shit, bro. One of his man, I'm gonna butcher it, but he's he's talking about how like when he was struggling coming up and he was all you ever you ever felt your ribs touch being like being that hungry? Oh yeah. <laughs> bro, it was, the way he did it was was tight, bro. Yeah. But we gotta go back to the news real quick. Cause I was thinking okay. as we were talking, right? Mm-hmm. It took most of my life. For me to end up on the news. And you know, the one thing I got to say about it, the one, the one major thing I took away from that that makes me happy as a man, hmm. that it wasn't for Larry Barker Investigates. Oh. <laughs> you feel what I'm saying? Yeah. Man, could have yeah. went the other way. Right, yeah, find out about that Johnny yeah. James sweatshop. Hey, could have went the other way. <laughs> Johnny James was not on Larry Barker Investigates, bro. bro. So we already winning. I just had to get that. One out. thing I did notice they 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 say it on Tommy Boy, bro. Um, the camera does that about a, about forty yeah, pounds. About forty dog. pounds. <laughs> nah, dog. I'm just kidding, that's that's the work, bro. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> That's the roids that I'm on. You should run marathons, dog. Yeah, you know I don't know if you heard this or not, but I cold, <laughs> punch, cold punch run marathons, dog. Hey, okay, so we got to talk about a couple of things that are kind of current here. Okay. About sixty fucking minutes. We went on a twenty minute <laughs> know, tangent dude. on sixty oh, minutes. Sixty minutes. Andy Rooney, how, bro, it's still in my head. I can't believe I remember that man's fucking name, bro. Yeah. I would hear the beginning of that shit. I'd hear that clock ticking. I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, we gotta watch this for an hour. Hey, but that's how I knew the Simpsons was was about to come on. True. And uh, what was it? Uh, In Living Color was about to come on. Yeah. Like I remember yeah, the yeah. Simpsons was like the shit because it was like, damn, I wonder what the intro, what the the intro is gonna be. Mm-hmm. It's always changing. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Because yeah. it always changes. I haven't watched that show in a long time. Oh man, that's yeah. one of Matt's favorites. I think they're really? I think they're gonna finish it. No, it was no, no. They no? put a sh- uh, an episode out that was called the series finale. Oh really? That's just gonna be on. Forever. It's just gonna keep. It's, nah, a, it's a legacy never show. Stop. It's legacy. Yeah. Yeah. It's a legacy <laughs> show. It's never gonna stop. So I just got finished watching the new season of Monsters, the Menendez situation. Oh okay. Anybody watch it? Mm-hmm. No. So, but you is, guys is Monsters is. is that whole show monsters just on them or is it no. just a bunch of so different it's um crazy. what's his name ryan murphy the guy that made american, uh, horror, american story. horror story yeah. uh he got a contract with netflix and the first one was the Dahmer story second one now is the, oh, the menendez he's the, one, he's the one doing that and then now the third one is going to be about ed gein the real mm. texas chainsaw massacre and homie from uh sons of anarchy is playing ed gein oh that's shit, gonna, okay. that one's crazy dog um, but now we're on the. <laughs> I, I, Lenward's looking at the camera like, I ain't watching none of that <laughs> shit. No, 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 man. So no. this one, the Menendez, um, man, like I said, I, I think I kind of was talking about a little bit. It was kind of hard to get through, Doug. Yeah. There was moments, and, and man, I could watch my, like, it's, it's, take some shit for me to go, God damn. And there was multiple times when I was like, mm, should I finish this? Because mm-hmm. they got graphic, really? fast. The first episode shows the actual, like, how they did it, the murder. Mm. Um, you guys remember, though, how big it was in the 90s, right? Yep. Like, yeah, kind of. Yeah. It was all over the... Well, bro, I only had four channels, so it was yeah. on all four <laughs> of them joints. <clears throat> Couldn't change it. Yeah. I even think it was on PBS. <laughs> right? Yeah. Right after Mr. Rogers, the Menendez trial right. was... Uh, but there was a lot of stuff that, like, I don't know, when I was younger, I obviously, obviously didn't get or understand. Mm. So when it came on... I just, in my mind, I was like, oh, yeah, these are the dudes that killed their parents for the money, mm-hmm. right? I don't know, Doug. That does not seem to be the case now uh, moving forward. Okay. Um, their defense, right, was that they were abused mm-hmm. sexually by their dad. Mm-hmm. And the mom was complacent or involved in some way, mm-hmm. shape, or form. Gotcha. Right? So she was either negligent or participating. Yes. Gotcha. That was their defense. Okay. Right? And the way that it like all like rolled out, you know, I always say this, two things can be true at the same time. Mm-hmm. Right? Um, 
it's crazy because now after the show came out, new evidence has come to the surface. Hmm. A letter that one of them wrote to their cousin or something like that talking about the abuse that was taking place, hmm. right? Uh, he's something about like he's still doing it or something. I mean, I'm mm -hmm. probably misquoting it. I, we could look it up, but I, I don't like looking at my phone when we're on the pod. Um, so they're talking about bringing that shit, like some kind of new trial. Some new evidence has come to the surface that mm -hmm. I don't know what they can do. I have no idea because those dudes got two life sentences without the possibility of parole. Mm -hmm. right. So, okay. If that's the case, right, if they were, and trust me, dog, I cannot get into how graphic they claim the abuse was, mm -hmm. holy shit. Okay. Where is the line here, dog? The line with what? Vengeance? The line with, <laughs> you fuck around and find out, dog. The line mm -hmm. with, when can you destroy a person so far, dog, to where they snap? And they, they fucking blow your face off mm -hmm. you feel what i'm saying yeah yeah and when is it self de self defense versus revenge mm. where's that line that's great that's a crazy one bro well i think uh when you're talking about especially like sexual abuse and stuff like that <clears throat> excuse me when you're talking about the sa uh you're anyone who's in like some sort of like parental or advisory or guardianship or something like that, those are the people who actually have control. Uh -huh. I think it's different when it becomes adults mm -hmm. because when you're adults playing in an adult world, you know, like <laughs> buyer's remorse, it sucks, but you got to be careful what you, what you get yourself into. Mm -hmm. Not saying that people who get raped or abused, like it's, it's the victim's fault. I'm just saying there are certain things that kids can defend themselves from that adults have other opportunities to avoid the situations where kids, if you live with someone or there. it's your teacher or something weird like yeah. that, it's like, you can't avoid them, mm -hmm. you know, or your yeah. pastor and or something. See, one of the, on the second trial, it's mm -hmm. interesting you said that because on the second trial, um, one of the jurors was arguing that mm -hmm. the juror was saying, well, why didn't they just run away? If this was really taking place, why the fuck? Did, and then she had a heart attack and died there. But, <laughs> Uh, yeah, what? in the middle of the deliberation no when they were back there. Yeah. Really? Again, I don't know. Ex Weird. It must have been pretty close to true. I'm, I'm, I'm uh, sure it wasn't like exa exactly. Whatever. Yeah. But she was arguing that. She's like, right. well, why didn't they just fucking run away? But the thing is, bro, it's easy to judge that from the outside, dog. Yeah. Like, it, it's easy to look at and be like, well, why didn't you just run away? Because you, you didn't go through it. Right. Right? Yeah. But that was some of the, the way that, that it was like brought. It's like to light, right? I can't believe she just said crazy. Why don't you, right? run, Why don't you away? run away? Because I mean, if you really think about it, like every kid at some point has been like, "I'm getting the fuck out of here. Yeah. I'm not listening to your parents." But the kids who ran away and never came back, those some different motherfuckers. Man. Yeah, like they yeah. they lived a whole different life. So just to make that as an argument, it's just like, where would a kid go? Exactly. You know, like nine and times and out of ten, a, they as a kid, like you, you don't, you know, yeah, you, you may think about it, but yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. Act, like we all don't. think that why we gotta clean our rooms or our closets yeah. or something because we don't yeah. have a choice. Yeah. We're like, I'm leaving. But how many people really act on it and, and never ever come back? Like that's yeah, they're you're in a real difficult situation. I I don't imagine those kids had the skill set. Well, no, because they were rich too, right? So that too, yeah, that way, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. So they were rich. Like when you're at that level of rich, you got a sense of entitlement and a sense of like, you don't understand not having. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? You know yeah. what I'm saying? I feel like I'm not rich. So mm -hmm. I'm looking at it from an outside perspective. But I would just assume if you're that level of rich, mm -hmm. you can't even fathom being without like that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so there's that, right? Mm -hmm. Added into the fact that these people are supposed to care up their bro. This is your mom and dad. Right. Right. Your mother, they say all men look at as like it's their their measuring stick for all future relationships. Right? Yeah. So if that was taking place, um, there's no telling. Like there's no telling what it mentally does to a child from from that that time bro mm -hmm. that amount that amount of abuse yeah holy fuck man mm -hmm. how do you measure that how do you quantify it right how do you the, the lines are so blurred at that time mm -hmm. what's right what's wrong about the way the children react to this yeah, right because sure. the one thing that's for damn sure the adults doing that 
Fuck that. It's beyond wrong. Wrong's too small of the word, dog. Mm-hmm. So how how do you I don't know, dog. How how do you look at it that way? And what what was what the, the show did um did well was it put you in the perspective of okay, if they are telling the truth, mm-hmm. how do you feel about it? Right. If they aren't telling the truth, how do you feel about it? Mm-hmm. It puts you kind of in the perspective of say you were a juror, right? How are you gonna what is it gonna make you feel? Mm-hmm. So like the first time it was a mistrial, right? And then everything happened with OJ. Mm-hmm. OJ got arrested. And they were in the same, they were in jail together. Oh, really? Yeah. So OJ got arrested and so their trial got like drug out and his trial was everywhere, right? And he got off. Ugh. So the state out there in Cali was they like, They weren't having it. Fuck this. But again, the, the, they admitted to what they did, mm-hmm. right? After a while, right? Mm-hmm. At first, the, the way it happened, like I guess they were talking to their uh, therapist and the therapist was recording what was going on right. and told them, you guys are safe. This, none of this is admissible, da 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 right? Mm-hmm. So the therapist's side chick... Which is not true, but okay. That's what they yeah, said, right? Yeah, yeah. The therapist's side chick. Here, just put these glasses on. You're, yeah. Your eyes will get fixed. Yeah, you're good. <laughs> put these glasses on. Wear them all the time. Yeah. You're good by the time you're 50. So I guess the therapist's side chick or whatever, she's the one who um, alerted the, 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 the fucking fuzz mm-hmm. to the fact that he had these tapes of the confessions. Mm. So they got it, and that was the whole process of it. So the defense, or no, the, the state, what they stood on was okay. If you admitted to this to these crimes to your therapist, right. right? How come you never told him about the abuse? Right. Why does this just come into the surface now? Mm-hmm. So that was the state's stance mm-hmm. that these guys must be lying because they told him everything but that. Right. Which is right. a good. It's a good question, right? Yeah. I mean, I I think again though, not to not to defend a criminal on that level but i think when you're dealing with with kids especially it's hard to give those adult expectations for behavior and be like yo i expect you to advocate for yourself and defend yourself and run and cry for help and and do those things it's like think about like what your parents are to you when you're young like that like they're god you can't get out of their their yeah. sphere. No, the no. world doesn't exist They're outside everything. of them. They're all of your protection. Yeah. They're everything. They're what yeah. you measure all of existence off of, bro. Right. So to be abused by the people that are supposed to protect you from everything. Mm-hmm. So just so I'm clear here, if that was the case, they got exactly what was coming to them. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? I agree. Was it I graphic agree. and fucking insane? One thousand yeah. percent. But listen. If you're abusing children like that, mm-hmm. I don't give a fuck, dog. You need your face blown the fuck off. Yeah. And Point if, blank. Especially, nah, I, that, and, that's just where I stand on And it. if they willfully inflicted that sort of, like, pain and trauma onto someone, they're fortunate that they had a quick quick demise. 100. They didn't give those people, those kids, like, a short-term, nope. you know, experience. They were just like, hey, as long as you're under our control, yep. we're going to treat you like this. It was a lifelong experience because look, if that is the case, mm-hmm. if what they're saying did take place that way, mm-hmm. my brother, they've been in jail now for damn near 30 years. Yeah. Right? So it wasn't just uh, one and done. The, damn, the so parents, they like, they're like 50 now, huh? The, the parents, if that is the case, if that did happen how they said it happened, they did get off easy. Yeah. You think? Yeah. It was done for them. Yeah. Right. These ones, again, I'm not a lawyer. I do not know the facts here. I'm going based off of what they are saying the allegations are. Mm-hmm. If the allegations are correct, they are the ones that definitely um, have been in a state of torture pretty their much whole, their entire their lives. Their whole life. Yeah, man. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because then think about it. Right. And again, this is all based off of a fucking Netflix show and some documentary. (laughs) I'm not in the court, dog. But we did see it on TV. We did see it play out a little bit. So I feel like that's why it's resonating with a lot of people, right? Mm -hmm. People are like, damn, we're getting to see kind of like behind the scenes. But judging off of all of that, right? Mm -hmm. That's a really, really, really interesting dynamic to defend Mm -hmm. and to also try and convict. Mm -hmm. Where do you sit? Where's your moral compass here, right? Mm. What what is what is justice and what's like you said? What's revenge and what's justice? Mm-hmm. 
where's that fucking Are line, they, man? <clears throat> Sometimes they could be the same, bro. Like you, when you oh, hold a grudge, Batman over here. Not even. <laughs> 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 no, hey. but but no, like for real. I mean. Like you said, bro, they, they've been traumatized their whole fucking life. Mm-hmm. Still are. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yep. You, when you hold like a grudge towards somebody like, you know, like that, it revenge is justifiable justice to you, to, you know, to that person. Like, you know what? You're not going to hurt me or anybody else again. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So by that logic, though, then uh, a kid who gets bullied from freshmen to a senior and then on graduation day decides to try to, you know, create some sort of uh, active shooter event because they're like, hey, you're not going to bully me anymore. Like, there's a certain expectation of, all right, we, we're in a community. We have police. This is their job. This is what you, what you have to rely on because mm-hmm. if we all take things into our hands – we got people shooting people in the freeway. We got people shooting mm-hmm. each other in the streets. Mm-hmm. Like we have all this stuff going on and it's happening now. So th- th- we kind of got to figure out how, where we're going to draw the line. To me, on though, stuff. Those are two different things though. You know what how, I'm saying? How, like, like we're, you know, these kids were kids and abused in their and home, abused in the, yeah. In the, by home. their parents, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? So like, allegedly now we're, you know, you know, the example is, you know, a freshman. Like, yeah, don't get me wrong. Just as, as a freshman, you're still a kid to some extent. Mm-hmm. But there's other influences, like you're saying. There's there's police. There's security. Mm-hmm. On, you know what I'm saying? Like, there is other shit. And I'm not saying, I'm not trying to, you know, defend anybody for shooting up a school or anything because that's not that's not good either, obviously. Mm-hmm. But there is, like, I don't know. Again, just just to me, there is a certain certain point where it is like revenge is kind of that and then that's why now well, that's why they're can be in, justice but that can be justice but, that, but, but there is a caveat to it because now look bro yeah they're fucking they're locked up their lives are done mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying but that's why that's why i ask specifically in that context because we're not dealing with an adult and a child we're dealing with children, children mm-hmm. yeah. and if a children responds demanding justice or vengeance or whatever we're calling it in an adult way, in a final and permanent way like that, can you still call it that? Can you still call it justice? You see what I'm saying? Like, can you still call it... it Right, to whom? whom? Yeah, exactly. Because that one person could say, I stop my pain and that's all that matters to me. But to everybody else, it's all fucked up now. You know what I'm saying? So, But and then, then, though, do you really stop the pain? No, because like, no. Or do it you just create, goes on. Or do you create mm-hmm. more? Well, you right? yeah. create more because it ripples, it through, ripples. through yeah. that family, yes. through yep. that for generations and, then and generations. Think about it. We said it. They've been in jail for 30 years, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. How many times throughout them 30 years is all that going to replay over and over and over and over and over yeah. in your fucking every, mind? Every night, bro. Every probably. night, every morning, bro. It, it'll rant. Because look. Have I haven't done Scientologist to get that shit off. There, yeah, but, <laughs> like you would have to completely audit your mind. One hundred percent. And that I'm good, bro. I'm good at like navigating the darkness that's in my mind, right? Yeah. And I haven't done even a quarter of what would be considered something like that, dog. Yeah. That is violence and something to the next level. Yeah, yeah. I couldn't imagine being able to turn that off, dog. Well, I think we, I think we, we feel it though. Like, you felt that level of anger. You just don't act upon it. Yep. And it's harder to resist acting upon it when you have all this other trauma to point to and be like, but this happened, but this happened. So every time your better self is saying, yeah, but you can't go there, yeah. you're just like, yeah, but I have to because I got yep. to because I, you know what I'm saying? So that that Once. justice and that vengeance is the same thing that people have. That's why people have such a hard time looking at what the police do, what the military does. Like, we all agree that we have to have these things and they're useful Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. for the group. However, at what line are we holding these people actually responsible individually for how they're responding to what they're dealing with? We kind of had had this talk the other day. We were on the way out to Rio Doso, but Mm -hmm. it's like, like we we do have these, this military, but some of this, a lot of this shit they're doing, obviously we don't see it, but it's, it's shady. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. And it's like, well, I don't really condone that. No. Yeah. Personally, you right. know what I'm saying? But Right. And is it really defending someone? Exactly. If you're, if you're creating a scenario where someone has to fight for their life. You know what I'm saying? Well, like, then it's what side you, you land on. Yeah, for sure. Right. For it's sure. Like, what God are you fighting for? Yeah. 
what side are you on? Because if I, each, well, side oh, feels well, the, each side feels the right. Right. I'm a I'm a parent, so it terrifies me to think that I could do something to my kids, and they'd be like, "Man, fuck that," and they go get a piece, and and I just Bro, wake up and, and like that's terrifying. The level though, right? So like, yeah. there's levels here, right? And again, some some people, it's a very <laughs> smaller fraction, but some people are just born fucked up. So do you have more compassion for them than you would say a kid who shot his mom? Because that happened recently. A kid shot his mom because she took his phone away. 1,000%. So you would have... Yeah, dog, for sure. Because look, think about it like this. You said it yourself. Your parents are everything to you. Mm -hmm. They are your measuring (laughs) stick for future relationships. They're your measuring stick for safety, for morals, for guidance, for Mm -hmm. all of it. They are your foundational pieces of who you are going to be as a person. Mm -hmm. Like it or not. Yeah. For them to do that Mm -hmm. and abuse their children for that long, in that way, that manner, Mm -hmm. my dog, that is fucking monstrous. They should have been on the fucking show as the monsters. Again, if what they say is correct. Right. I don't know I was not there. Mm -hmm. Basing it off of their defense, though. And some shit that's starting to come to light. Yikes, my dude. So do you think they should be let out? Um, that is where it gets cause interesting. Because there's, there's literally right? nobody who could inflict the harm. Yeah. Nobody on earth couldn't inflict the same harm on them in the same way. So there's an argument to say that they would never have that response to another yeah. human being. So that's where it gets interesting, right? Uh, that's where it gets interesting. No, yeah. you don't, don't see, but that's the question. About, I don't know about that's that. That's the question. So, I mean, yeah. the thing is, is they, they, they committed this crime. They I mean, did, for sure. And they yeah. admitted to it. So, so what, yeah. why, would, why would the st- state or government turn around and be like, well, given the circumstances... It was justifiable. It was yeah. justifiable, so you're, you're, you're off scot-free on That probation. was their defense. So what they said was they told his, the dad to stop Right. Mm-hmm. And they were fearing for their lives. Mm-hmm. So it was self-defense. Yeah. They had to take them out before the parents took them out. They were worried that the parents were going to kill them. And they were they were 18 or something. They so, were like, I don't know, something they like were that. like, yeah, they right were, on the yeah, cusp of right adulthood. There. Yeah. So, OK, see, that's those are the clues to me that says ah, we should dig a little deeper because. Sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes people who have been thinking about doing a crime for a while, or let's say the homies all get together and we're all going to rob the spot. I'm going to throw the young bull the the pistol. Yeah. yeah. And the rest of us are going to handle b- business, but he's just got to hold the gun because if he gets caught with it, he's the he young do guy. He'll do less time. He'll do less time. Yeah. The rest of us didn't actually have a weapon. Yeah. And like that sort of thought process. So what if they're looking at it like, we're going to get these motherfuckers and we're going to get this insurance money and we're going to be good. Yeah. But we got to do it before we're 18 well, because see. once we're an adult, yep. it's hammer time and we, we won't have an excuse or we won't have a way out. And that's what the state said. The hmm. state, the state was saying, I wasn't even watching yeah, this shit, but, okay. yeah. but you were, it was all over the news when we were kids, dog. I really wasn't watching you, it. Though. You might've subconsciously so, well, been picking it. You were watching 60 minutes. Yeah. Dog. They were yeah, talking yeah, about yeah. I was on it. Right, right. So, but that's what the state, that's both. That's what's yeah. interesting about, the show and now there's documentaries so Mm -hmm. again uh, something else that adds validity to what they're saying is the dad signed menudo remember ricky martin and that whole crew i i I only learned about it after the fact yeah Yeah. so one of the members was saying that the dad abused them too Mm. okay so and that just came out now too Mm -hmm. all these pieces are starting to add validity to it right Mm -hmm. in certain ways so that's why i think they're looking at it what did that their father do what was he He was big in the music industry i don't know exactly but he he signed them Uh, he was Mm. up in the music industry bro he was um he was immigrant came here bro for a better life married their mom young from what it showed in the the show that's what their father was yeah really yeah um but he was on some dirtbag life like from what it's starting to real from what it's shit starting to point to but like you said that was the state so that was the state's stance right Mm -hmm. it's like okay it was still so the reason they got their their concurrent life sentences right mm-hmm. was because it was premeditated right the they same had life. planned yeah. it out right so that's why they got their their they were facing the gas chamber yeah so that's why they got what they got was because they went to these stores they looked at different guns they planned the whole that's why it right. was first degree murder gotcha right yeah but their their defense was that it was premeditated because they were defending themselves from what they thought was coming. 
mm. was their parents taking them out because they had already told their dad to stop, that they didn't want to do that shit no more. But why, why would they have thought that their parents were going to kill him, though? Like, how are you going to convince me that your parents wanted you dead when they... If I got built-in slaves, yeah. and, like, and I hate to really get into the, the weeds on this, but when it comes to, like, sex, like those circumstances, yeah. when it's parents, when it's kids, when it's... It's usually based around some sort of community. It's not just one family sitting in the some secret neighborhood or something like that. It's usually surrounded by a church or just some other group of people, some kind of civic organization or something. And it's a bunch of different families selling their kids off, shooting pictures, like doing all that wild shit. All that weird shit. Yeah, like the the Satanists and all that shit. Like they have all that. That's been a part of the 60 Minutes world for a while. So I know I'm pretty familiar with that sort of stuff. So I'm wondering if those kids grew up in that obviously they would have been demented Mm -hmm. but at a certain point you're not necessarily well you're still crazy but you're not like actively trying to harm other people Mm -hmm. so it 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 almost feels like it would have been worth it for them to get the money and then go on and live in their dirtbag lives because they've now inherited those thought processes yeah. from their parents yeah. who introduced them to this dark side shit because, you know, for whatever. Which, well, they're, what they're trying to say again, just based off of the Netflix show, mm-hmm. not my fucking Dick Tracy investigation here. Big boy did it. They're trying to say, yeah, <laughs> that again, the dad, they're saying had some sort of abuse happen to him as well. Right. Which, which that okay, tends see, to, that's when, what when you would, look back, yeah. right, it tends to be the case a lot of times, right? right. It can't, but... That's still no fucking There's excuse. There's no excuse. There's dog. no excuse. I don't give a fuck, dog. Yeah. Bro, your circumstances are your circumstances. True. It's up to you to break that fucking trauma. Either right. you're going to break it or you're going to pass it down, right? Yeah. And if mm-hmm. you pass it down, you're a fuckhead too. Yeah, you're passing it on to someone else. Yeah, yeah. You're, just, you're just giving your pain even more. It's going down the line. And the more it goes down the line, the worse and worse it gets, dog. So, okay, so let's go back to vengeance and justice. Because you just made a perfect argument for your pain being your fucking problem. Why should I care? Why should I give you compassion? Yeah, it sucks to be you. I'm sorry I didn't come in Mm -hmm. in this game to be you. You came to be you, so you got to walk that. And you got to carry that, and it sucks. And... Is that true then for foster children? Is it true for kids who've been abused in their own homes or in their churches or by adult uh, elders and stuff like that? Is it true for rape victims that nobody believed? Like, where are we going to draw the line on all these concepts? Because we keep saying, believe all victims on one hand, Mm -hmm. but now we're seeing some of these motherfuckers is out here lying and just trying to get a bag. So what? how are we going to, as a community, how are we going to resolve this? Because we can have expectations for ourselves, mm-hmm. but once we get into, hey, I got to help manage your life because you're out here fucking up, yeah. fucking it up for the group, Where? how do we draw the line? Because that's how you elect sheriffs. That's how you keep judges. That's picking DAs and prosecutors. Those people have to, have to be in alignment with the rest of us. Mm-hmm. We all have to think the same. I don't know if there's one resolution to mm-hmm. this, right? Because... Like I said before, some people are just born fucked up in the head. That's right. the case, too. Some people don't have generational trauma. Right. Some people are just, they're born without whatever that piece is. Yeah. Same way you could be born without hands, yeah. right? They're born without whatever that piece in here that says, hmm. Yeah. <laughs> says, I probably shouldn't be doing this. Right. That, that right. part of the mm, brain where they're yeah. just like, mm, don't do that. <laughs> yeah. What do Think about it What again. is it called in like a vehicle when you can't go past? A governor? A governor, yeah. 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 You know, Some people you know are born without that, that yeah, governor. That's that's a, yeah. 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 And that's, yeah. that, but that's a rare case, right? True. It's coming, you see it now, a lot of this stuff is generational trauma, okay? Mm-hmm. But at what point do you take goddamn responsibility for yourself to not pass that pain forward, mm-hmm. right? Are you going to stop it or are you going to just keep letting the wheels roll? That's that's where I look at it. That's right? an, a that's an, uh, a very mature and adult perspective. Mm-hmm. I think when it comes to kids, th- that expectation is not the expectation. Like they can't think like that. No, but see they what don't I'm have saying. The, the, the no. range. Well, what I'm saying is is let's look at it from the father. Okay? okay. Let's say what they allege is correct, and what they alleged he went through is correct. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. It's up to him to not pass that on to his children, True. dog. 
no yeah. matter what, where you come from. I, I just, I, I have a hard time just saying, okay, yeah, blame your parents and then be a fuckhead and pass that shit on down, dog. Right. Just keep passing it down. Who's going to stop it? It has to stop with you or it has to, the buck has to be passed with you or stopped with you. Right. That's on you, dog. Like, and for me, if you continue passing that shit on to your children, mm -hmm. that makes you even a bigger fuckhead. Okay. See, I, I agree with that. I think that is absolutely the case. However, I don't think we translate that. Let's take it outside of crime. Mm -hmm. Let's just go into like poverty. Mm -hmm. Some parents are broke and their parents were broke. Yep. Their kids are going to be broke because nobody Probably. took, yeah, because nobody even peripherally took the interest to learn anything about financial stability, financial security, like anything. Nobody wanted to educate themselves. So at some point, that's your family's fucking problem. Yep. You come from a broke ass fucking family. Mm -hmm. But have you noticed that we don't like rich people? We don't like wealthy people. We're like, oh, it's your fault. You're taking advantage and all that stuff. Like, call a spade a spade. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. some at some point, you can look at an Elon Musk or a Jeff Bezos and be like, yeah, he's taking advantage of his position. Yeah, but he got there. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? He wasn't born with that money. It didn't just fall into his lap. He actually had to create something and build it and, and, and build it up and make it valuable. So do we still continue to say that our government has to take care of these people who are not handling business the way they should be? Again, I think it's hard to paint it with a broad brush. Okay. I don't think there's one answer mm. because some people are some people taking advantage. Yeah. Of mm -hmm. course. Yeah. Oh, no doubt. Some people actually need the assistance, right? Okay. So I feel it's easier. It's very difficult to climb out of generational poverty. Mm -hmm. Very mm -hmm. difficult. Mm -hmm. You get, you know, you know, you get some people that can do it, but it's, it's a rare occurrence, right? right? I feel like passing down generational trauma mm -hmm. is a different conversation because there's less people involved in passing of the trauma. Right. So if you're trying to climb out of generational poverty, mm -hmm. it's going to take more than just you. OK. Right. I, I would say it's so. going to take mean, more than just you. You're going to need would benefits you more. To yeah. Have help. I, you, I, 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 how many people climbed out just them? Sorry, not very many people. Yeah. They I had mean, to have a, I, something going on around them. Yeah. I right? think I don't think anything with people actually happens just with one person. However, I do think that the linchpin of what's going to change or what's actually going to take place, that change is up to the individual. Like if you want your life to change, I have to you, change you yeah. personally mm -hmm. make that decision. And, and all of us around you yep. are participating in that, but we're also benefiting in our own way. Yep. I think that's true. I don't think that one person can, can change anything no like and, that and i you see could start it maybe you could start to change what yeah. did Mark say my voice is i might not change the world but i'm gonna spark the idea that, that sparked the mind that could change the world yeah that's a good way of looking at it real pop was so dope the man. reason though that i say that yeah. right is because <laughs> the reason i say that <laughs> Damn. hey the reason the reason i say that though is because passing on generational trauma mm -hmm. especially abuse like that to your children mm -hmm is an individual job. That's, yeah. I would say, uh, yeah. And you I can't blame multiple places because you decided to abuse your children like a piece of shit because you were abused. Right. You can look at outside entities making it more difficult to climb out of generational poverty. Mm -hmm. So that's where it's a little, it's a yeah. little blurrier yeah. there, right? Okay. There's hard stops there, I think, in certain positions. But again, again, I'll stand here and say wholeheartedly, you want to make a change, brother? I'm not going to change because you tell me to change or you yeah. tell me to change. I'm going to fucking change because I want to change. Right. All the people I know in my life that have effectively stopped doing drugs mm -hmm. and are no longer strung out, they made the decision. Right. It wasn't their mom crying. It wasn't people passing away. Yeah. It was no level of rehabilitation that stopped it. Mm -hmm. Everybody I know that has successfully been clean said, you know what? Fuck this. Mm -hmm. I'm done. Mm -hmm. And then we're done. Okay, so, all right. So still trying to correlate this with the, the Menendez thing. You remember when we were growing up, they had this thing called crack babies. You're born addicted. Yep. 
do they have a choice whether they grow to become further addicted later in life? I mean, I think, came in a game. Like again, that. it's it's harder for them. Mm -hmm. It's harder for them because they they like other. Okay, that's that's a good that's actually yeah, that a good was, conversation that was crazy. because think about it. You were talking about people that are born with money. Mm -hmm. Okay, whether you're white, black, brown, yellow, orange, if you're born with money in your family, you start the race from a different position mm -hmm. than I did. So that puts you ahead. Maybe you're two laps ahead. Maybe you're fucking five million laps ahead, and I'm never going to catch you. Mm -hmm. But you do start from a position ahead of me, okay? Yeah. If you're born addicted to crack or meth and mm -hmm. you're strung out, you had no choice. You're even further back in the starting position, dog. Yeah. You didn't choose to be born that way. It could have affected you mentally. It could mm -hmm. have affected you physically. Mm -hmm. So you're born, again, starting the race from, from a disadvantage. Right. So, so is that what we're dealing with when you're talking about the Menendez brothers? Could be, because they were abused at such an early age. And then the right. same thing with the dad, too, right? Mm -hmm. Say that is the case. But, but... Are we locking up these crack babies or not? Are they super predators or not? See, because I've been carrying that, not me personally, yeah. but people who look like me have been carrying that since Hillary Clinton, yeah. Joe Biden. Like, this is why when people talk their shit... Nowadays, I'm like, man, y'all haven't been watching 60 Minutes all your life like me. Yep. I know what these people have been up to. They've been calling us all this shit and treating us like we are these damaged goods mm -hmm. out the gate. So we've had a, uh, excuse me, a separate level of justice mm -hmm. and a separate level of expectation from the, the legal system because it was always perceived that, well, they're the downtrodden. Mm -hmm. They're the bottom. Mm -hmm. They're the lower rung. They're the, the last. The least of us. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I don't want to be treated like less than. I just want you out of my fucking way. Mm -hmm. I want you to leave me alone. I want you to get out of my fucking way and let me build the life that I want to build and stop trying to fuck with my head. Mm -hmm. Can we say that that's what these guys were up against? They were rich. They were rich. So, again, it's a, it's a not every single situation is the same, True. right? The way that everybody doesn't react to situations the same, right? Mm -hmm. Like, I can smoke this joint, and you can smoke this joint, mm -hmm. and we're going to have two completely individual reactions. I'll be asleep. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's a pretty good hybrid, dog. I'm yeah, pretty awake. Yeah. But we're going to have individual reactions. Right. That's why I think things have to be looked at on, on somewhat as an individual basis. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. <sighs> One person's situation isn't another person's situation. Because, okay, let's, let's say... That was taking place from a level of severe poverty, mm -hmm. right? It's a different conversation. Mm -hmm. It's a completely different conversation. For one, <clears throat> the state's defense would have been something. The state's, how the state was trying to convict them would have been something completely different too. Mm -hmm. Because if they killed their parents and they didn't have no money to inherit, then what, what was the reason? Right. It would have had, had, yeah, it would have mm -hmm. left a question open. Yeah, but it's easier when there's money involved to just be they like, They did well, it because they money. wanted the money. Right. Which, uh, I don't know. Again, I wasn't there, dog. That could have been the case. But it, it from, and and again, it could have mm. been both of the cases. True. You feel what I'm saying? That both two things could have been happening at the exact same time. And it's hard to, it's hard to differ. Did you ever see, uh, what's that movie that they said was so crazy that wasn't, Sound of Freedom. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. you saw it, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay, so you remember when they did the sting operation in uh, the other country and they had like all the madams and the 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 people who were like selling yeah the yeah. kids yeah but those people came up in that world mm -hmm. like some of those people actually were those same abused people it's their culture get, yeah that's of. what i'm saying it's so a culture it's like, they're raised in yeah so it's like to me it's hard to to draw that line because like you said it is so individualized and it's hard to say okay this woman was you know, selling and prostituting and doing all this stuff. And it's like, yeah, but she's been living in that her entire life. And there are so few opportunities for them to come up in that world. Maybe they're just doing it in like, hey, I hate that it had to happen to you, but I'm trying to get the fuck out of here too. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. these guys were in a world like that where they could have been literally afraid of, Every knock at the door of their bedroom door at night, mm -hmm. every footstep they heard, every time they heard a belt jangling or something, they're yeah. going back into that place. That's a hard thing for people like to be an abuse victim to, to really set that aside because that's what you're talking about. You sitting in that cell thinking, man, these motherfuckers had it coming. Mm -hmm. 
and nobody believes us because we were born rich. We're born rich and yeah. and we're not right. We're right. Not right. We're not like, exactly we were, right. Yeah, was, we're fucked up we too. We don't know how to conduct ourselves correctly because we were never we were never shown how to conduct ourselves correctly, right? Mm-hmm. So again, going back to culture as that. Say that's that's all you know, right? Mm-hmm. You were raised that way. However it is, mm-hmm. I still feel at the core of a human being, mm-hmm. we do know right from wrong, my I dog. Can't. Okay? Yep. Whatever your culture is. Mm-hmm. You can't make me believe that in your core as a human being, you don't know it's wrong to abuse children. True. I don't give a fuck what your culture is. True. So then again, yeah. it goes back to your decision. Personal responsibility. You can't. I Nah, dog. Sit down. Mm-hmm. Take responsibility for how you are doing stuff. Mm-hmm. Because unless you were born without that governor in your mind, <laughs> you know that's not right, dog. That's yeah. not right. And you don't have to like, and the kid and the children know that's not right, bro. Yeah, for sure. Because guess what? It's not. Yeah, it's just it's, it's an objective not. right and wrong. Yeah, there. it's just not. Yeah. Like you can't. No, it's just wrong. Yeah. So it's got to come down to that. Like you gotta, and that's just in life in general, dog. To go, you know, to bird's eye view. Mm-hmm. If you do not take responsibility for your personal actions, and you just keep. Pushing it off on somebody else, you're never going to get where you want to go. Mm-hmm. You're just not. I because you're going to be carrying, right? It's like carrying kind of like like extra weight up a mountain, dog. Mm-hmm. Because if you're not doing the work and you're internally I was looking at it like, yeah, you know what? That was me, dog. I fucked up. Because I knew that was not right or I knew I shouldn't have done that. And you know what I said? I said, fuck it. And I did it. Yeah. It wasn't my mom's fault. It wasn't my dad's fault. It wasn't how I was raised. I knew it was right. I knew it was wrong. And I still did it. Still, for whatever reason, wanted to do it. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, that that's kind of where it's at. And it, it's it's an interesting dynamic that brings up a lot of gray areas in our justice system, mm-hmm. in where your morals stand, right? Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. what are your principles here? Mm-hmm. Um, where, where do you say, nah, fuck no, they should have killed those motherfuckers, right? <laughs> or where do you say, nah, like that was, they planned it out, that were their parents, like it was so graphic. Because yeah. listen, dog, nine times, <clears throat> point blank range with a fucking 12 gauge, bro, they blew their dad's face off. Mm. Their mom's skeleton was completely destroyed. There was no, there was no like nothing left of it. Hmm. None of it was intact. So okay, so this I, I hate to keep going back and forth. I but guess you got what you got to do is dynamic a, of when it. You're, when you're judging this stuff, yep. it's like okay, if it looks like you were trying to get away with it, yeah, that's different. That's mm-hmm. where the, that's if you're bar- where they went to if jail, you're trying to bury bodies, if you're trying to make it look like hey, we're gonna wipe this down and like or like they got robbed. Yeah, or yeah, they exactly. Tried blame, they tried to blame it on the mafia. What? Oh, that was their that was their defense at first. They really? said that the mob did it, that they were like had a problem with their dad. That was their defense at first. And that's why they claim they used shotguns because they said that that's what the mob would have done. Mm, oh, so they, okay, so they're not saying that the mob actually did it. There's, no, no, no. They're saying. At first, when they were trying to get saying, away with it, that was, their out. That was, their, that was did, what they were saying. Just as soon as you said that, then but that to me is like, bro, that's the linchpin, that's bro. Like why you, they got convicted. If you're brother. trying to get away with it rather than just saying, I did it, I'm sorry, you know, just like. Gun, smoking gun That's in your hand and you're just why like, oh they my got God. convicted. Exactly. I'd have just been like, hey, I'm gonna call the cops on myself. I That's, had to put an end to this. That's why they got convicted. But again, you said it yourself. Everybody does things differently. Yeah. Right? But again, again, like I said, two things could also be true at the exact same time. No doubt. They could have been being abused, which means that the the parents pieces of shit, and I do not feel I mean, nah, I don't feel bad for them, dog. Yeah. I, I don't if they, if they if was that, really on if, that. If, yeah. If they was really on that time, hey, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, your time is up. Your time is up. Your card <laughs> yeah, yeah, has yeah. been punched. You fucked up. That's, yeah, that shit's wild. But yeah. they could have also been at the same time, okay, well, we're going to take them out, and then guess what? We're rich as fuck. Right. We're going to inherit all this money, mm-hmm. right? And then, I mean, who do you blame for them being a shithead? Yeah. At that point, yeah, right? Yeah, because that's a shithead way to think. It's a shithead way to think about it. Yeah. Again, being passed on by a shithead. Right. Shithead. Act just round and beget round, shit and, beget shit round and round. Beget shit. Who's gonna stop it? Who's yeah. gonna right? Right. Like, who yeah. says? Who stands up and says, "Oh no 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 no, yeah. we ain't doing this." Yeah. So it's very true that two things, especially because, like you said, um, I mean, if that was the case, and you're like, "Hey, look, man, yeah, we were being abused. 
Mm-hmm. And that was, again, that was the state's questioning. Mm-hmm. If they told their therapist all about this, mm-hmm. they left out that part. They never told the therapist that they were being abused. Right. That information came out when they were busted. They got caught. Mm. So, that, again, that's why they got convicted. Dog. There right. was reasons why they didn't get off. Right. But well, they, they were bad criminals, too. No, it wasn't good at all. Yeah. yeah. But again, they, bro, they didn't have, they didn't have to, they were did not grow up criminals. You start defend, your defense before you, you yeah. contemplate the crime. Yeah. They, they, <laughs> like, but see, they were rich kids. Yeah. They didn't know what being a criminal was like that. That's like every true. time they got in trouble, That's their true. dad, their dad bailed them out. Yeah. Because they had money to do it. And especially if their thought process is, well, this is what the mob would do. It's like, yeah. Mm, That's true. That sounds you're like dumb. something you watch. Yeah. yeah you're, <laughs> you're dumb. That's like, dumb. stop watching TV. So it, what's, the reason, you know, I've been thinking about it a lot is because it does raise a lot of like moral, principle, ethical questions questions yeah. Yeah. here, you know, like, and there, I don't think there's no one answer. Hmm. I also don't think even if this evidence does come out, I don't think they're going to let them out. Okay. Let me ask you something like they're in California, right? Yeah. Okay. So let's say in California, specifically in the state of, they say, you know what? These guys are justified. We're going to cut their time. It's not life without parole. They're now eligible for for parole. And we will consider it and we will have the conversation. Do you now avoid becoming a part of the Californian community? Do you never go to California because you're like, nah, fuck it. Motherfucker get locked up. They should stay locked up. Or do you say, hey, they're right. Because they do it different there than they do it here. I just, I wish I had any kind of faith in our judicial system. <laughs> I, I, it might make life easier if yeah. I had any kind of faith in it, right? Uh-huh. Unfortunately, I do not. No. It is fucked, right? It's fucked. Yeah. Can it be saved? I don't know. But I have no, like, faith in it whatsoever. Good. So I don't know if I would judge it that way because it's always changing. People are always moving around. What's good mm-hmm. over here isn't good over here. They, I mean, you got people now that are getting out that served 30 years for fucking selling weed and we're in here in a motherfucking consumption lounge smoking weed mm-hmm. and moving that shit out there in the front. Yeah. Legally. Legally. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? <laughs> so Thanks for pointing the, that out. It, it's so convoluted and so all over the place. I don't know if I'd be able to judge it just off of that. Mm-hmm. Cause who's it benefiting for them to change that? That's what I'd start mm-hmm. asking myself. Gotcha. Who who's Who who's really behind? Who's benefited yeah. from them changing? Who's got a son that's <clears throat> locked up that they're trying to get out because they pass his law? These are my questions. You feel what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. These are exactly my questions. So that's why I just don't. I just don't trust it. I've seen it fuck too many people. I've seen it, you know, not work for too many people mm-hmm. to where it's like, I don't know, bro. I just try and stay out of it. Yeah. <laughs> really? I want to stay yeah. as far away from that motherfucker as possible. That's why Larry Barker is not investigating <laughs> shit around this motherfucker, dog. Yeah. How do you how do you feel about the justice system? I think he and I see it similarly. I think we're just on different sides of the coin. Mm-hmm. Um obviously I've I've done my best to stay out of it. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Um I did a couple of things when I was younger with, with some, some of the homies that kind of got me thrown on the wrong track. And then, you know, so I kind of skated underneath it, bro, to be mm-hmm. honest. But I've seen good friends, like, just get drugged through for shit they didn't do, for right. shit, for stupid shit they did back in high school even, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Like, a fucking pulling a little a runner, you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying, for a 30-pack for a party, like, something as stupid as that. Right. And they're still through it. Another homie for a teenth, bro, of weed before it was legal. Yep. Wow. <laughs> Dog, like, it, it, wow. like, so, but from what I see is it, do, it, it doesn't work. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? It doesn't work to some extent. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like I said, I've kind of been able to navigate it a certain way to where I'm not in it, you know, for a long time. Maybe yeah. I get like a <laughs> ticket or some shit, yeah. but... I don't get. I, I, I but you're not, not to, like, yeah, like on parole, like probation, like long term, no, like monitoring, no. ankle monitors, and well, all that well, shit. A piece of advice I heard <laughs> a while back is, you break one law at a time. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, don't commit, don't but commit see, felonies when you. What's, <laughs> what's fucked up about it, right? Not to cut you off, Jay. What's mm-hmm. fucked up about the whole system, right? <clears throat> okay, you do your time, right? Mm-hmm. You get uh-huh. convicted. You do your time. They say you're able to enter society, whatever Mm -hmm. that looks like, whatever they think you're ready, right? Mm -hmm. They make it damn near impossible to stay out. They make it to where you're almost forced 
to go out there and do some fuck shit just to survive. To go, to go back. Right. right? So all the homies that have got out with like a like a like a tail on, like a five year tail, right? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like my cousin Kenny, for example, uh -huh. right? He got out with all the cards and chips stacked against him. Mm -hmm. He should have never made it past that five years, dog. He should have got locked up again. Right. And he did. But and he did stay out. Yeah. But guess what? You know how fucking rare that is, dog? I'm oh, talking yeah. about, bro. Yeah, he he should be playing the lottery, dog. <laughs> because ninety percent of all my homies that get out like that, mm -hmm. they're in and out, in and out, in and out their whole lives. Right. They're never fully able to complete what they put them out here with because it's 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 almost impossible, dog. It's right. almost impossible. I think what they want the justice system to be, mm -hmm. what it's supposed to be, could work. Okay. But guess what? Mm -hmm. It's broken. And it's been for a long time. The premise of it well, seems like it could work, right? Because mm -hmm. it, it runs on a monetary value. It you, could. Know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, like it does. Yeah. You know? No. Absolutely. When there's uh, inmates uh, in jail, that is a we, we know it. 100% know it. true. So I think when, without when, question. whenever there's money involved in, in certain things, mm -hmm. that changes everything. It does. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? People's morals go out the window. Fucking right <clears> and wrong <throat> is just like, well, next time we'll... we'll We'll fix it. Money turns it into mm -hmm. it. Don't feel that wrong. It's not, yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying. So it feels like, kind of right. That, like that. That's yeah. what you know. It's like how 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 much money can you pay your lawyer? You know what yeah. I'm saying. Yeah, that's, because you can get priced. You, you can get priced jail. out of justice. That's how you stay, yeah. bro. Exactly. You can get priced out of justice, man. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. And that's that's yeah, fucked. Up. Absolutely. That's it, fucking foul. Bro. It, it is. It is. I think because uh, people give me shit about what I've been through. And why I actually support what the, the system is and, and like you said, what it can be. Mm -hmm. It's not so much that I'm giving credit to the system. I'm giving credit to people. I think, like you said, there's always a part of people that knows the difference between right and wrong. I think so. And you can't shake that. So you might have a crooked prosecutor, a lazy fucking judge, you know, all these people who just down the line don't give a fuck about you. Mm -hmm. And you got to deal with that. But you also, if you educate yourself even a, a little bit, number one, you can be not like you, just flying under the radar. Maybe I got a ticket here and there, nothing big, versus being in the system and actually going up for something that's crazy. Mm -hmm. And if, God forbid, something like that does happen to you, you got to have the mental fortitude. You got to have the character. You got to be able to stand on who you are and who you know yourself to be. And you can't come off that. Because if you're innocent and you know you did not do something wrong, you don't fucking fold. Mm -hmm. You don't fold. You make them prove it in court. You make them lie on the stand. You make them do all their shit, spend all their money, and they're going to fucking hate you for it because they don't want to do all that work. No. They just want to turn the crank. But if it's your life on the line, mm -hmm. you have to hold that line for you. And subsequently, the system ought to be able to recognize when that is actually what you're doing and you're not being malicious, you're not being fake about it and they should be able to acknowledge, mm -hmm. Hey, this is not one of the bad ones. You know, maybe we tried to turn this into, you know, an opportunity to make some bread, but it's not going to benefit us. Mm -hmm. It's not worth, it's not worth it. This person's going to have a story. They're going to have a life. They're going to represent something greater <clears throat> than what we're doing to them. Mm -hmm. That's what discredits the, their whole situation. So I, I like the idea of what a judicial system is. I think our system, the way it's designed, is actually probably fine and is close, like one of the best systems in the world. Because some places, bro, they, they cut your hand off. They cut yeah. your head off. Yeah. Yeah. They lock you up for good. Just for you stealing, just disappear. Bro. Yeah, yeah, but some places, North Korea, well, bro, no due your whole family some, is gone. Yeah, yeah you there's know no what I'm saying? There's no due process in some places. Exactly. Yeah. And, and even here, there's not yeah, always due process. I agree. You it, know? It's a system that can work that is fucking but broken. But it's up to us. I, I know. I know. Like, it's, it always the goes. gap is up is for us to it fill. It always falls back. It, it really is mm -hmm. because yes. if you don't like it, vote for another share. Yes, bro. <laughs> like, that's the thing, if you don't bro. like this judge... Get his ass off Get the bench. Hey, like, off, if I'm living in total squalor, dog, squalor? Yeah. Yeah, yeah you yeah, good with I, the words to take it. We run in it. We run it. He's if I'm living him. in that, right? And I just sit there in it and wallow in it. Yeah. Bro, it ain't 
fucking no one ain't gonna clean my shit. No, right. it's no one's responsibility to wipe your own ass, dog. No doubt. The moment your parents hand that off to you, dog, it's t- you, it's you either time. wipe your ass yeah. or you smell like shit. Yeah. Right. I prefer to not smell like shit, dog. Yeah. So I'm not gonna live <laughs> like that. I'm going to wipe my own ass and I'm gonna fix the things that are around me that I can fix. Right. You yeah. know what I'm saying? There's certain mm-hmm. yeah. There's a certain amount of stuff that you can control, and even if you just go to that length, but you always continue to go further. Like, hey, if I can control what I understand and what I know about the legal system, so I can defend myself properly or understand it, I'm going to take the time to learn that mm-hmm. and not watch football or you know, like do other things that eat up my time when I know I'm vulnerable or I'm one of these people that they could get over on me because I don't have the money. To, to buy the justice that I deserve. You know what I'm saying? So it's like you can either have the knowledge or you can have the money or you could have both, but you will not do well with neither. No. And far too many of us are just running around just like, hey, man, it was hard. Like you want that sympathy like we're talking about. You want that sympathy because your life is hard and you grew up in, in a bad situation. And that. But as we're seeing everybody not everybody's gonna give you that grace and throw you that bail no. a lot of people are just gonna be like hey i had that hard too bro mm-hmm. sucks yeah. to be you and Look, keep it moving I, I i had it hard and i used it to my advantage right exactly i had it hard exactly. and i used it to my advantage and you're a great example of that yep so i think on that note fellas <sighs> don't expect people to come and rescue you and help all the time yeah. and wipe your own fucking ass yeah. Yeah. and don't kill people or yeah. assault them but motherfucking defend yourself until next time respect the connect peace it's pick the neck